Hello viewers, welcome back. This is Charles. We are going through QuickBooks 2016. We started talking about the charts of accounts over in part one. And I want to finish up to finish up the part the part two of charts of accounts. So let's go ahead and flip over to QuickBooks and I will show you, I will continue talking about which accounts we need to add in the charts of accounts. So we can try to open our sample file. As it opens, we left off in part one, we are talking about liabilities. A short term liability is something you you are going to pay off fairly fairly quickly, usually within twelve months. And the long term liability is something you pay off for a long period of time, like a mortgage, like a lease payment, and those are good examples of the long-term liabilities and those long-term liabilities those are the ones that we are going to pay off within a period of let's say five years to maybe 10 years or 50, 50 years as long as it is exceeding 12 months so let me show you how to set up a long-term liability and i'm going to click to go to the charts of accounts those are the charts of accounts as it is loading i just want to show you how we can be able to create a long-term liability so we can maximize it so that it becomes very big so those are those are our charts of accounts and we want to see how we can be able to create a long-term liability so we say do we click anywhere we right click anywhere and we go to new when we go to new you might be tempted on a loan as a, as the account type here we have a loan in that screen that pops up we have a loan and you may you might be tempted to pick that as the account type right here but what quickbooks doesn't tell you is whether that is going to be a short term or it's going to be a long term so what do we do if you are looking for a long-term liability option, because the one we are seeing here as a loan, if you just click on that, it is a loan, yes. But what we are not sure is, is that loan going to be a long-term or it's a short-term? So that we don't actually know. So what are we going to do? We just come here and select others. If you are to create a long-term, liability option you look at for you look for that long-term liability which is this that is the account type so after coming down to this down arrow you'll be able to pick that long-term liabilities and we've said we get that after clicking on other account types so click on that and after choosing the long-term liability, I'm going to click continue here. And the next thing it is, it, QuickBooks asks, asks me is what would be, what would I like to name my account? It's like they are trying to ask me the name of my long-term liability. You can name, you can just give it any name of your choice you can name it anything you want if you want to name it 
let's say you want to give it a name of your bank bank of, of your bank maybe it's a loan and you want to give to give that as that long term liability as that bank name if you want to give it a name that indicates maybe maybe if you're paying a mortgage and that's what you want you you want to be showing us if let's say you got a car on credit and you're going to be making monthly car payments then you can name it that way so any name anything that you like to to name your long term liability you can choose anything you want but me i'm going to call it loan mortgage so loan mortgage loan mortgage it's a loan mortgage i would like to call it a loan mortgage and you'll notice down here there is a description this is not a sub account if if it was maybe if if this was going to be a sub account of an, any given account you can just click there and you select it's going to be a sub account of which because we have also a mortgage as a long term liability we can have it is a mortgage but office building we can have a mortgage under loans but for us what we are not, what we are saying we are just maintaining that as a straight code i will explain some of those sub accounts in maybe when i start on the on the new new models or new versions of quickbooks that's when i will be able to tackle some of those things so that we can be able to understand what those mean so i've said i'm going to call it loan mortgage and you will notice that we have a description and that description is actually just explaining what that loan what that item line item meaning or you can just call you can just put maybe bank loan or you can just call it a loan let me just call it bank loan as my description you don't need to put here the account number that one you don't need to create the account number right there you just leave that empty so after putting the description we said you don't need to put your account number it's not necessary but that's it was just put there just to for you to get more information but it's not necessary so what is important there is you have to, maybe you wanted to enter the opening balance that's the one that is very important the opening balance let's say maybe we had our loan mortgage to be fifty thousand dollars i can say fifty thousand dollars it was as of our fiscal year was was first jan 20 2024 we had selected so that is the opening balance fifty thousand dollars so after after putting in the opening balance you click ok when you click ok you can save and close or save and create a new one any of those two option works the meaning of this save and close it means you are saving this and you are leaving that that screenshot or you are leaving the screen but save and new it means it saves what you have typed and it creates an option for you to create another another long-term liability but for for us what we want to do is a save and close so when you do that you'll be seeing that our loan mortgage of fifty thousand dollars has been created it's now there so so we are we have seen our our long-term liability is now set up and that's how we create we create the long-term liability and here you are seeing it says fifty thousand 
dollars that's the balance or that's the opening balance that we had at the beginning of our fiscal year so anytime you make a payment towards this mortgage or this loan mortgage you want to put you want to put that payment to this very loan so that when you clear the balance keeps on reducing so lo your loan mortgage payment is not an expense to your business it's a long-term liability because we are going to be paying that amount until the useful life of the, the the lifespan of the of the loan so so you want to be also seeing how much is your loan how much is your outstanding loan because if you keep paying those monthly mortgage payments we expect that this total loan is going to be reducing so we want to be seeing that at least to this year we have submitted a, a payment how much are we left with so that's why we are creating this loan mortgage so that every payment we just make on that loan mortgage it keeps on reflecting the current outstanding balance so the next type i want to talk about are credit credit card accounts that's the next thing i want to i want i want us to talk about we can look for one of the credit card accounts if at all we have one yeah up here these are the credit card accounts that we are seeing down here credit card credit card so i want to put some more light on those credit card accounts you can see that we have some because this is i'm just using a sample file that quickbooks provides us we are seeing that we have two credit card accounts this one and this one that's what we are seeing but now we want to create our own this one was called it was called quickbooks credit card and this one was Carl Oil credit card. So we want to create our, our ours. Maybe we are using PayPal. Maybe we are using debit cards. We are making some online transactions and we are receiving, we are, we are allowing customers to make their payments through those, through the use of, the, of their credit cards and all that, credit cards and debit cards. So we want to create one. You can just we said we right click anywhere in those in those uh, charts of accounts then we go to new after going to new we have to look for credit card because that's what we are we are creating we are creating a credit card account so we want to set up these credit ca credit cards separately just like the way we have set up our liabilities we have created those liability long-term liabilities separately that's the same we want to create our credit cards so i'm going as i said you right click and choose new and you can notice from here that we have under the account type we have what we call the credit card we are seeing the credit card is on on a list so you click on that spot that says credit card and click continue so when that opens up you'll have to put in the information that is talking about your credit card so you can call your credit card anything if you want to call it your bank name if you want to call it the name of the of the credit card maybe it is paypal so anything that you want to call it maybe let me just call it paypal account this one i can call it a credit card it's a credit card it's a credit card under the description these descriptions they are just matter of explaining what the other account or the, the account line means they're just trying to give a narration to what we are creating so 
Here we are seeing that we have credit card account numbers. Just know that we are not supposed to, we don't need to create those credit card account number here. We don't need to fill those credit card numbers inside here. It's just really an informational purpose. But what we have to do is we have to enter our opening balance. If at all it is there, if it's not there, then don't 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 assume that we are supposed to be having it. You make sure you include it if at all it's there. So how are we going to be seeing the, the, the that opening balance? We said that we get the bank statements or we get the statements for those credit cards and we see their opening balances in other words the opening balance is always the closing balance for the previous period in other words what we are trying to look at is if at all we've been transacting throughout the year and all our transactions for the year we've actually seen them but we are seeing on top of the transactions we've made there are some balance that has that is still left on our cards so what that means is that we are supposed to pick that information from the end date of that statement in other words the statement end date will be the one that is going to give us the balance that we shall start with in the in the beginning of the year so the the ending balance is always our opening balance so we can say maybe it is around this let me just assume it is thirty thousand dollars and this is as at at first jan 2024 and we can pick it from here first jan 2024 and another person can actually put 31st December 2023 because it is the previous balance that is going to become our opening balance. Those dates, they mean the same thing. So when you have done with that, then we have to go ahead and click OK. So remember, when you are starting, maybe your financial year is starting from January to December then it means the December's ending balance will be the opening balance for January. That's the, that's the implication. So we pick that ending balance as of the previous year to be our opening balance in the beginning of the year. So after plugging in that, that balance, we click OK and we can be able to save and close because we are done. The balance is still here, we click save and close. If at all we had so many accounts, we could create them. If you had very many credit card accounts, we could create them. And we save and close. And when you do a save and close, this is asking you if you would like to set up bank feeds for, 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 for this credit card. I'm going to say no for now, I'm going to say no for now and I will explain to you how we do those bank feeds in the coming modules. But for now, let me just click no and we, are, we can be able to see our credit account being created. And we are seeing it is here PayPal with our, with our opening, bal opening balance at 30 thousand dollars there is something which is i'm which i'm trying to skip the these account numbers i'm not showing you how we be able to create like the way we are seeing these payroll payroll liabilities you are seeing they all have these account numbers those ones i will explain them in the coming videos because i just want you to pick the best information that is going to actually help you to be able to understand some of the things but we shall actually know what we what we 
what we are supposed to do with these account numbers because it is also something that is important especially if we are using account numbers like the way you are seeing in the sample file they have been using them i'm just creating this for study purpose but as we go on just subscribe and you'll be able to have everything cleared but i just want to give you a a straightforward way of how you can be able to create that because adjusting those ones is very easy so we've now known how to create those credit card accounts but let me just give you a little word of caution here with something that i see often a lot of times people will take their credit card statements that comes in their mail and they will enter it as a bills in credit in, in quickbooks when you enter a bill you are going to have to tell quickbooks all the accounts that were used on that bill so far as the transactions are concerned you are going to have to tell quickbooks how much you maybe how much you spent on let's say or how much was was spent on maybe television television subscriptions maybe how much was spent on meals and entertainment and so many other things so if you don't pay that full entire amount if let's say the tv subscription was was let's say five dollars and you don't actually pay all of it in full because what what will happen some of these some of these bills they are going to be coming in on a monthly basis like the television television subscription you find that you are paying maybe to dstv they are deducting a certain portion and maybe they are deducting that money from your they they are just you they are just deducting money from your your card so if you don't tell quickbooks if let's say you don't actually pay in full and maybe you pay halfway and you find yourself not not clearing for the months then you are going to have a situation where quickbooks thinks that you have a lot of money that is owed on that credit card and that's not always the case so the credit card transaction themselves are actually created on on this home screen right here because now if you try to go to the home screen i can show you where we create those credit card transactions credit card charges they are here so there are there are those people who are actually going to have some some problems to create some of these things because they they find themselves taking all the transactions that we are supposed to be on a credit card and they enter them as bills in quickbooks that thing is is not right because if the charges were supposed to be deducted from the credit card you make sure you come to quickbooks and enter those credit card charges so that the the credit card can can actually can actually have a right balance so that's that's some kind of information that i wanted you to actually take note of and i've i've told you we only we 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 enter those transactions here where it says enter credit card charges in 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 the banking section this is the banking section that's where we enter those those credit card transactions all the charges that we are supposed to be billed from your credit card they are supposed to be entered in that section of the in that banking section of quickbooks under enter credit card charges so if you don't see this if you don't see this enter credit card charges on your banking section then it means you did not set up your credit your credit card correctly so if you don't see this 
reflecting it means you have not created your credit card in a correct way so you should be able to look at your credit card at any time and see the balance that is due on that card so the next thing that i want to mention are your equity we are going back to look at our charts of accounts and the next thing i want to look at is basically our equity equity accounts we can maybe try to look at equity accounts are these ones so we are seeing there are some here that have been created so these equity accounts we think of uh, maybe to to elaborate what equity is 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 basically you when you think of equity think of equity as something that is equaling to in other words it's it, it's it is it, it, it it's the equivalent of something it is coming from something it is equal to one that you are definitely want to set up a because one of the things that you that you will want to set up in quickbooks is the equity accounts and one one of the things that we have to take note or we have to understand under equity is that we have two issues there that are actually going to be a little bit confusing but they are very easy to understand there is what we call owner's equity and owner's draw in other words owner's draw is like a drawing or a withdraw then owner's equity is like a contribution that has been made by the owner then the other owner's draw it is a withdrawal that has been made by the owner of the business so sometimes they call it shareholder equity if the owner of the company puts money into the business it's considered an owner contribution in other words the owner the owner has brought in more cash and if the owner takes money out of the business it's considered as an owner draw meaning this should always be money because the owner can actually it may be a sole proprietor and the owner takes out some goods these goods we don't deduct them from owner's equity there is somewhere we deduct under those who know how to prepare statements but what we are focusing on is cash if the owner brings in cash in the business it means that is an owner's contribution if the owner takes out money from the business then that's what we call the owner's draw or the owner draw so i just want i just want to show you how we set up those two items so what i'm going to do i'm going to right click anywhere and i go to new so when you when you when you right click and you go to new you choose new and i'm going to choose from the from this the account type i'm going to choose is what we call the equity account equity here i'm choosing equity and i want to i want to i want to name it of course when when i choose when you choose equity you click continue after doing that then you give it a name i want to name it i want to name it owners owners draw i want to name this one as draw so i can call it maybe i call it owner let me just put them in capital letters owner but now under here i'm going to have two things i'm going to to have what we call the 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 owner's contribution and the owner's draw in other words the cash goes by by the owner 
and those are going to be sub accounts so how am i going to do that i can first of all first register this one as owner i say i can just call it equity here we don't put the balance then i save a new then what i want here i want to create what we call owners contribution contribution so when that is done it's going to have to be under the sub account of owner so we can click we can save and say let's save and new then we also put in the owner's draw it's a sub account of owner so you can maybe just call it drawings just to give it a narration drawings and you, you now here we can save and close when you do that you are seeing owner is on top but these ones, the contribution and the owner's draw, they are sub account of the owner. So that's what that's what we are meaning. I will explain when I reach on these account numbers because I know they are very important, but I am ignoring them for a reason. I want to first show you how to create some of the things before we, because now you are seeing the owner comes first. This one they are coming in as they are sliding, meaning this all these two they are under owner. In other words, we have owners contribution and owner draw. So that's how we create those those two. I just want to show you how we create those ones, and that's how we create we create those because you need to also to be careful how we can be able to create sub accounts hope you hope hope you hope you can be able to pick that so now let me show you what this looks like because now we've saved and we've saved and we've saved and the, maybe i can double click on it we go back and we look at this is how it's going to be looking like if i told the we had some figures but the figures are not here we have not put in figures. The reason as why I have not put in figures is because I just want to I just wanted to show you how we create them. But you can always add figures. And the reason as why I'm not adding is because we had some equity accounts that are already in here. They are already here. So I've just added those ones. We have capital stock, we have this and and, and all that. Just wanted to show you how to create such so when you click save and save and close that's how it looks like hope you are seeing how you have you how you've gotten this sub account of draw and contribution under owner they are underneath the that that word owner so sometimes i said this i said i, I set this up as shareholder equity you may find someone as just instead of saying owner the person said owner's equity it means the same thing and it would be the owner of the business because the owner of the business is the person who actually brings in money to do business so you might see owner's contribution or shareholders drawings and at the same time you may you see sh sh shareholders equity equity contribution or equity draw any of those things mean the same issue it is just that some of the terminologies they are they use different terminologies but they are all set in the same way and that's the correct way to set those accounts so the next thing i want to point out is is that you have a cup of income we are seeing we have so many income accounts here a couple of them we have some of them but we just want to know how we can be able to create some of those some of those accounts so when you make a sale for 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 your business that's going to be considered as income 
and that's your taxable money. If you create an invoice and then the customer pays you, that is income to your business. You can either keep it in one account or you can actually prefer to keep it in so many accounts as you want to. Because you may find the business is dealing in, is selling products, but at the same time, the business earns some interest. It is the same business and they are using the same money. So we are going to be having income coming in, but they are coming in, they are coming in, in different accounts. So whichever way you choose to set them up is, is, is right. But we just want to, to see how we can be able to create some of them. So we, we right click and go to new. We select it is an income. And now we click continue. We can maybe say it is an interest income. Interest income that we are going to be receiving. Maybe we fixed some money in the bank and now they are paying us. So we can call it income. Incomes. You can save and save and close. But this one, the name was already used because we are working on. We can maybe we can call them maybe dividends because we may receive dividends. We may be a company and we bought off another company and we are receiving dividends. So the dividend income has not been there. So it has been added as an income as you can see. So there are so many things that you can actually add there. So that's how we can be able to add the income accounts. But you have to make sure that you know how to add some of these accounts in, in a correct way. So the next one I want to mention is, is called the cost of goods sold. It is the next one on the, on the line here. The cost of goods sold. And let me just tell you what, what this means. Anytime you buy a product or a service, to make a product or a service in your business, that's considered a cost of goods sold. For example, let's say you are in, let's say the construction industry and you build houses. Each time you have a painter coming in to paint maybe the, 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 the buildings that you have constructed, the cost you are going to pay that painter is what we call the cost of goods sold because if they are not painted it means you haven't actually finished so you had to buy a service of the painter to make the product that you sell in your business it is the same thing for those who are in the manufacturing industry if you go and buy raw materials and you process them into finished goods. The cost you, you spent on the raw materials is what we call the cost of goods sold. So that's what literally cost of goods sold means. So the type that is going to have the largest grouping will be the expense. This one I don't need to talk about more in terms of the cost of goods sold. This one, even if we don't talk about it in a, a detailed way, because you just need to know what it is. But what I was explaining is that the account type that is going to have the largest grouping will be the expense. You are, see, you are seeing the expense is taking most of the things here, up to here. All of, all of those are expenses. All of those are expenses. As you've seen, they are all down here to this point. All of those are expenses. So you have got a, lo a lot of these already. They are already set up for you. But you will, you will go in into these 
expenses and find the one that is relevant to your business. You may find that what the what QuickBooks created for you is not actually working for you. Can either modify them or create new ones. So that's what we that's what we do there. But let, let, let me just highlight something here. Very, very, very in regards to the account numbers. Someone may be wondering how do I create the sub account that is going to look like this? I'm going to create an expense, and that expense is going to be, let's say, we are going to be having rent. Rent is under utilities. We can categorize that under utilities. If you want to create this rent to come down, to come up here, where you are seeing this, it comes below this line and it is under this utility here the utility you are seeing up here what do you what do you do you you first of all first you 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 have to look at this this account number that is on the utilities the account number is 65100 65100 that's the number that is on utilities so if you want to create a sub account it should always have that number starting with these first numbers so how do we do that let's right click and we'll go to new what you want to create is called an expense so in the account type we'll pick expense one of the expenses that we want to create is called rent this rent we click continue we give it a name as rent we put them in capital letters to identify them first but now this is how we've been creating them we, it is going to be under utilities so it is going to be a sub account or it's going to be a subset of utilities so we look for utilities when you look for utilities from here utilities is here we picked it so now we want to make sure that this rent is going to be under these codes of utilities what do we do we, we make sure that we pick the numbers that are going to be starting from starting with the six five in other words we can create the number to be six five 40 even if we just say 65140 because this number this number 65140 is above this it's like it's going to be under this same number in other words this is zero, these two zeros you are seeing here they are the only numbers that we are going to be changing if you want to create something under utilities these last two zeros we can make it 50 we can make it 60 we can make it 25 and when you do that it will be under utilities so we can say save and close and we shall see where it has gone you are seeing it is already under utilities with these numbers they are flowing another person can actually we can double click there just to open and see if you want to run reports that's how it would it would look like but if you want to edit this you right click then you go to edit someone can change it and it says that this this one for utilities is 600 is 65100 me i can make it 6101 it's also going to be right i can just click save and close it's also going to be under that same utility so that's how we handle those that are going to be using account numbers it is the same thing that we want we, we, we can do from here for all the accounts that we've been creating we can look at the credit card numbers these credit card numbers they are starting from 
200 0 5 we can maybe create this paper to be under this we can create it to be under this it can be a sub account of any of those main accounts but that's not what i want us to learn but i just wanted to give you a highlight because i don't want to leave someone with pending ideas i just want to clear everything from the start but we take it slow but sure because we want everyone to be picking what we are what we are doing so that's how we create the expense account so you can go ahead and create as many expense accounts as you want you may create interest expense in the same way you can you can create other expenses in the same way i've created that rent expense so now that you have really actually you, are, you have got the, the 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 idea of how to set up those charts of accounts then i want us to look at something else but if you find yourself that you have not actually got the idea of how to create these accounts make sure you rewatch the video and be able to see how we have actually created some of them or you can actually go to some of these sample files that quickbooks provides so if you are still not sure on how to set something up we want us to what we are going to do in the next video we are going to open up one of the sample files that quickbooks has availed to us and we see how those files were done and we are going to take a look at some of the sample files that are available in quickbooks in the next video and that's going to be video number six so the video number six is going to be looking at the sample files the quickbooks sample files and we see how some of those things were set up so with that let's meet in the next video thank you for watching